Okay, I'm going to show you one of my techniques for doing an HDR or high dynamic range image. And in a nutshell, what that is, your eyes are capable of seeing a much broader range of light values, bright and dark, than what your camera sensor is capable of recording or even what film is capable of recording. So one way to achieve a full tonal range is to take multiple exposures and then combine them in the computer. So for this photograph that I took at a uh, industrial, uh, basically a, a foundry here in Birmingham, I did three exposures. So this is the standard exposure straight out of the camera. And then this particular one is two stops under exposed. And I go over here to the library module. What I did was just change the shutter speed. So you can see that the aperture is 5.6, the ISO is 100, this is at 1600th of a second, this one is at 400th of a second, and then I did one that's two stops overexposed at 100th of a second. So this image is gonna give me all of the detail in the shadow areas, and this one is gonna give me all of the detail in the highlight areas. So I'm gonna start off in Lightroom first. I'm gonna go back over to the develop module. And I'm not gonna do a lot in Lightroom at this point. If I wanted to, I could adjust white balance. I'm just gonna do a little dust spot real quick on that one. I could do straightening angle, things like that. But I'm gonna leave this pretty much as it is. What I'm gonna do is select all three images. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to go to edit in, merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Open anyway, I need to upgrade my camera raw, but I haven't, I'm not gonna do that yet. So it's gonna take just a minute, obviously depending upon how powerful your computer is, will vary how long it takes and obviously how large your file size. But one of the cool things about this is that even if your photos aren't exactly uh, perfectly lined up, ideally you wanna use a tripod. In this case, I didn't have a tripod. Uh, so they're just slightly off, uh, and Photoshop is going to go ahead and line them up for me so that uh, they're all one composite image, which is fantastic. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our three images, and if I wanted to, I could turn one, turn them on and off selectively, but I'm going to leave them all on there. I've got it in 32-bit mode, and I'm gonna go ahead and click to remove ghosts. I don't have any in this, but if they had cloud movement, if uh, somebody was walking through a frame, for example, uh, you can have Photoshop remove them, and it does a pretty good job of doing that. This slider here basically just shows you what the uh, brightest white point is uh, capable of. It isn't going to affect anything in the image, so you can do nothing with that, do whatever you want to with it, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna create the composite image file. And I'm gonna go up here to image, mode, and oops, change it to 16 bits per channel. When I do that, it's gonna bring up the HDR toning dialog box. And I always leave it set to local adaptation, have the preview on. I like to see the, the tonal curve and the histogram. There are all kinds of presets that you can select from that are gonna adjust all the possible HDR settings. Uh, there's photorealistic. There is some more artistic ones. It can give you some pretty wild and crazy looks or some pretty standard looks. So that's kind of a popular look these days, but not necessarily what I'm going for with this image. And you can zoom in and out, see what's going on specifically with the image. And one of the things I don't like about this is it gives kind of weird halos, um, which you can, can control. So I'm gonna go back up here. I'm just gonna leave it a default. And we're gonna go through these one by one. So edge glow, that's kind of the, the halo look and you can increase, decrease it, its strength and its radius. 
Not a lot's happening with the image right now because I don't have a lot of variance in the uh, shadow and highlight areas. So gamma is effectively contrast. As you increase your gamma, you're going to increase your contrast. So if I go down here, you can see very, very little contrast. Exposure is going to give you global increase or decrease in brightness. And detail is kind of like adjusting the clarity slider in Lightroom. And I like a pretty fair amount of detail personally, especially in an image like this that's so rich in textures and contrast. So the shadow slider is going to basically allow you to control the brightness of just the shadow areas. So you can see as I break, bring this up, these areas in particular that are darker uh, become lighter. Uh, highlight value is going to give you more control over the brighter areas of the image. As you can see, the halo is starting to come out more as I adjust the highlight and shadow values. It's becoming more obvious. And I like it right about there. I'm going to boost up the saturation. Not quite that much. And I'm going to boost up the vibrance a little bit. And I'm going to take up the overall brightness, the exposure slider. And basically, you just kind of play around with it until you've got what you like. And I'm going to bring down the radius of that glow. Oops, a bit too much. So, click OK. It's going to make a new file in Photoshop that you can then adjust however you'd like. So, for example, if you want to, in this case, I need to remove that spot. Bada bing, bada boom. And when you save it, and go back over to Lightroom, it's going to pop up back in the file. So this is the original straight out of the camera, and this is after an HDR merge. Nothing to it.